Well, it's all about Serena Williams at this point in time, and that's where we'll begin, talking about the U.S. Open. In the women's cat, um, singles category, just um, at the wee hours of today, you had Serena Williams progressing into the third round, knocking out second seed Annette Kotavitz in um, three sets at Mosbeset. Um, quite a difficult match at Mosbeset for Serena Williams, but she pulled through convincingly um, towards the end of um, the, the, the match itself, talking about the deciding set. And you have to give credit to a 7-6-7-4, um, 2 6, six two that ended with Serena winning the first set in a very tiebreaker. And um, the second set, she dropped that before, rearing back to win the deciding set by six games to two. Um, she was definitely not short of support, both from the Patterson crowd at Arthur Ashe Stadium, and more importantly, at the players' box where you had golf legend Tiger Woods also in attendance, you know, supporting and cheering her on. It was quite an emotional atmosphere. And talking about upsets, it must be said that this is actually an upset considering Annette Contavey is actually the second seeded player when it comes to the women's single. So the journey continues for Serena Williams. Um, it's um, all about the fairway tour at this point in time. But on the court, the woman is definitely focused and you have to give her credit for that for contavert um she just joins you know other seeds who have fallen out um by the way talking about you know um other seeds who were also ranked going into this tournament well let's move away from serena williams now still talking the u.s open apparently and seeds that have been knocked out of the women's singles draw you had the third seed uh, Maria Sakari also knocked out of the competition and that was a shock loss it must be said a big upset right there because that was um, a result no one expected and it was it came from China's 7th or 5th ranked player known as Wang Xinju um, who earned a three sets victory over the third seed Maria Sakari 367575 that ended a really epic clash in terms of how competitive it was you know from both players but at the end of the day the Chinese knocked out the third seed so um just a few hours ago you had the second and third seed seeded players in the women's um, singles draw being knocked out of the competition and it leaves the draws wide open especially for world number one Iga Swiatek who fancy her chances of winning a second slam title this year following our French Open triumph um which would definitely you know um, culminate to a third Grand Slam for the world number one although we need to see her also progress through the ranks it will be intrig intriguing to see how that pans out. Well, still talking the women's draw in you know the at the U.S. Open, you had Tunisia's um, Ons Jabbar, um, who became the first Arab woman to win a Masters title, also progress into the third round. She did that convincingly. It must be said. And for Jabbar, there were no um, you know concerns in the performance. It was just um, a straightforward victory, um, defeating. Elizabeth Madik, 7-5-6-2 that ended. But she wasn't the only one. You had Coco Gauff, that's the French Open finalist, also earning a straight sets victory, 6-2-7-6-7-4 over Elena Gavrela Rus. Um, you know, talking about, you know, the young American there. Madsen Keys as well made it a brilliant one as well for American tennis. 6-4-5-7-7-6-8-6 that ended over Camila Giorgi. And then for Coco Gauff, She'll be taking on our American counterpart, uh, Madsen Keys, in the third round of the competition. For Ons Jabbar, she'll be taking on Shelby Rogers in the third round. And these are definitely entertaining, you know, um, clashes, it must be said, going into the third round. For, you know, um, these women, they'll be looking at, you know, bouncing back, especially for Ons Jabbar, who couldn't make it count at Wimbledon, losing the final to Elena Rybakina, who has since been knocked out of U.S. Open yesterday so um the women's draws are definitely you know um bringing up uh, the upsets in terms of seeded players being knocked out but in the men's draws and um, the big guns are still standing and it's onto the men's dr singles draws we go now and it has to do with andy murray that's where we start from Andy murray the former world number one who won his maiden slam title um right here at the us open 10 years ago um also progressed into the um you know third round and he did that in four sets Five seven six three six one six love that ended against Emilio Nava, um, the twenty year old who posed a bit of um, a challenge in the first set before Andy Murray stamped his authority. Now this is the first time Andy Murray is making the third round at the U.S. Open since 2016. So it's been six years in the making. I remember for the former world number one, 
is battled with multiple in, um, injuries and surgeries from your hip injury to back injuries down to hamstring, you know, foot injuries, among others. So it's great to see him make the third round of the U.S. Open um, since 2016. It will be intriguing to see how that pans out. Well, but it's not only Murray. You also have Nick Kyrgios as well, who is through to, you know, the third round. He also progressed in four sets. And uh, for Nick Kyrgios, despite, you know, the legal challenge he has um, back home in Australia, the Australian Maverick is making it count when it comes to on-court focus. 7673644664 seven, six, four, four, six, six, four, over uh, France, Benjamin Bonds. Um, that ended, you know, for, for Nick Kyrgios making it through to the third round as well. And um, it was a match that had so much of brilliance from, you know, Nick Kyrgios firing 30 aces and also winning the final nine points of the game, or of the match rather, you know, to book his place in the third round. We will be taking on JJ Wolf in the third round. And it will be intriguing to see how he's able to, you know, uh, match up with JJ Wolf. For Andy Murray, he has it more difficult talking about, you know, facing the 13th seed, Matteo Berrettini. Um, that's the former Wimbledon finalist, and um, I'm sure that's a matchup everyone will be looking forward to, talking about Andy Murray against Matteo Berrettini in the third round, while Nick Kyrgios similarly has it easier, taking on J.J. Wolf. Well, <clears throat> let's move away from there now and talk about the Euro Basket. Yes, that's the basketball championship for European teams. The 2022 edition, as I said, begins today. In fact, it has begun because the first match of the tournament um, that's you know between um, Spain and Bulgaria began about 40 minutes ago there were about 12 30 that match began and um, the, the Eurobasket 2022 is definitely one to watch out for the defending champion Slovenia will be in action this um, afternoon um, they will be taking on Lithuania by 2.15. Let me just run you through the list of matches we have as quickly as possible. I talked about the opening match. There you have the draws and the various groups right there on your screen. You have um, Group A, where you have Romania, Poland, Israel, Spain. Group B has Italy, um, Macedonia, Estonia, Russia. But Russia has been, you know, um, expelled from, from the tournament. And um, you have other groups there as well. So the matches... Itself, you have um, Spain against Bulgaria, which, as I said, has begun. Started twelve thirty. You have Slovenia, the defending champions, beginning their title defense against Lithuania, and that's by two fifteen. You have Bosnia Herzegovina as well. You know, playing today. Do not forget Turkey. You will also be playing against Montenegro, Belgium against Georgia, and France against Germany. That's something to watch out for later this evening. France against Germany will be seven thirty p.m. And then for basketball lovers. It is the time to see um, the various NBA stars represent their nations. Now, let's look at the favorite teams, talking about assessing, you know, um, those who are the favorites. For Slovenia, they are the defending champions, and they would fancy their op um, the opportunity to make it back-to-back -back wins. Um, they won their solitary um, gold medal um, at the last edition, which was five years ago. Um, the basketball championship used to be two years ago, um, every two years, rather, but that was changed to every four years, making it look like the World Cup format, talking about the FIFA World Cup. This edition should have taken place last year, but due to um, you know, the pandemic, COVID-19 issues, um, it had to be moved to this year. So um, Slovenia will go in as defending champions and look to fancy their chances. You have Serbia, who has um, you know, the back-to-back -back MVP for the NBA, talking about Nikola Jokic, um, in that they were champions um, they were the finalists, rather, in 2017 and 2009. So they'll be looking to earn their first um, championship title. Slovenia, defending champions, as I said earlier, will be looking to make it back-to-back. -back. You have Greece. Yes, that's a nation that is a powerhouse when it comes to European basketball. They've been champions twice in 1987 and 2005. They would also fancy their chances of going through in terms of making it a third championship title. Remember, the Greeks have... Um, Yanis Atetokounmpo, that's the Milwaukee box star, including his brothers. The only challenge they have is the supporting cast. How much of um, support will the um, Atetokounmpo brothers have? That's the big question for the Greeks. But should Yanis get going, then they will definitely fancy the chances of getting the gold medal. You have France as well in the mix. They will be taking on Germany later this evening. But France are, you know, the where the 2013 champions, I beg your pardon, they were the 2013 champions. And they would also be looking at yeah, making another run for the title. 
Lithuania, who will be taking on Slovenia, the defending champions later this afternoon, are also three-time champions, last winning the title in 2003, having won it in 1937 and 1939. So Lithuania is also a force to reckon with. It will be interesting to see how this pans out. It is the 41st edition of the Euro Basket, and um, it's taking place from September 1st to September 18th. May the best team win. And for Slovenia, they'll be banking on, you know, Goran Dragic, as well as Luka Doncic of the Dallas Mavericks to help them keep their title. 